Hello, this is Dr. Mercola. I'd like to talk to you today about one of the most important things that you can do for your physical health. If you've been reading the newsletter for a while, you'll probably know what that is, and that is vitamin D. Yes, it is just massively important, and I've been had the opportunity to talk to a number of different world uh, class experts to really get the, the latest and the greatest information for you. And what has become very clear is that there simply isn't a better, single, more cost-effective solution that you can do to accelerate your health. And uh, this is a short video, but I've done an hour free video that you can have access to. There should be a link below this video, but you can always use a search engine, which is a text box at the top of every page on the site. Just type in vitamin D and uh, press enter, and then you'll have a list of all the articles on vitamin D. And one of the first ones there should be the free one hour video. So please watch that for more of the details. Um, but I, I just wanted to give you some information of why it, it, this, in, why vitamin, this all this information about vitamin D is so new. It's related to the fact that we only had the technical ability, ability to measure vitamin D levels commercially outside of the research lab for about 10 years. So about 98% of what we know about vitamin D has only been discovered in the last 10 years. So if your physician went to medical school the, in the last century like I did, then the odds are that unless they've been reviewing the literature uh, and their professional journals, they are not going to know that much about vitamin D. And there's a, there's a good possibility because you've been reading the site that you'll know more than them. So it's really key and crucial th to have that appreciation. Now, one of the reasons it's so key because when we've We've done this analysis, we've looked and analyzed populations. We know that there are uh, the typical average standards and then what we consider to be optimal or healthy. And those ranges now, we, we believe, are somewhere between 50 and 65 nanograms per milliliter uh, for, for 25 hydroxy D. And that's the most accurate way to measure vitamin D status. And if you use those levels, we're finding that in the U.S. population, about 80 percent of the entire population is deficient and there are subsets such as uh, African Americans with deeply pigmented skin or any other pop uh, individual with deeply pigmented skin there's a greater than 99 percent chance that those individuals are deficient in vitamin D and as a result suffering some challenges now if you watch my video you'll understand all the different uh, diseases that vitamin D influences and part of the reason it does that is because it's a very powerful epigenetic influence and by that I mean it actually regulates up to 2,000 genes nearly 10 percent of your genetic code is regulated by the vi by vitamin D and of, of course knowing all this we're going to want to make sure we get enough vitamin D and one of the best ways to do it the optimal way to do this is because it is almost impossible to overdose in fact is, is, to our knowledge there's been no reported case of overdoses from this method is by exposing your skin to UVB radiation if you're going to do with that by sunshine then you're going to want want to essentially have enough exposure to the, so that your skin is minimally pink and that is a that is a functional determination. So it's not a, a number of minutes because there's so many variables that contribute to this that you really want to get that minimum peak. Now unfortunately for four to six months of the year for most of you watching this you're going to be in a vitamin D winter and it is virtually impossible to get enough UVB exposure unless you're, you're using a safe tanning bed. Then that safe tanning bed will give you the UVB exposure. But the other option, of course, if you're in this vitamin D winter, is to snowboard uh, and go to a subtropical environment where the vitamin, uh, where the UVB uh, is present and is able to produce the vitamin D in, in your skin. Fortunately, that is just not a simple or practical option. So if you fall in those categories where you, you, you don't have access or for whatever reason you don't, you're not unable to have access to a safe tanning bed with this going to provide uh, UVB exposure, then you're, you're really left with only one option, and that is to take an oral dose of vitamin D. So I want to talk a little bit about that now. And uh, be, you, you probably are aware that vitamin D is an oil-soluble vitamin. Because of that, you have to be somewhat careful of the absorption. So uh, that is, a, it is an important consideration because you have to absorb it into your bloodstream before it's going to be beneficial. So we, uh, we're actually working with a company called Nanotechnology that's been actually been able to produce a form of vitamin D that is, that is a, a nano-sized and 
and essentially able to bypass the normal absorption route. So this distribution uh, mechanism is able to be sprayed under your tongue. And why would you want to do that? Well, if you do that, there's a number of different capillaries, it's called sublingual, that are there. And then, you, and then that vitamin D, once it's exposed in that area, will actually go directly into the capillaries into the bloodstream, essentially bypassing the gut absorption. So it, uh, uh, for the most part, eliminates that absorption challenge and it goes right in to the bloodstream and it's very fast acting. So you're gonna get the maximum amount of vitamin D and there's no issues with, with absorption. So uh, we're really excited about that. And there's a number of different ways you can take vitamin D and if you're taking it with a, a drop, sometimes they're in a, a large oil form, but then the, the dosing can be a challenge. But with this spray, it's very precise, very accurate. And uh, the big advantage, too, with a spray is that if you have a child, an infant, because infants need this, too, in the winter just as much as an adult does, or if you have uh, an adult who can't swallow, then this spray, which is very um, uh, good tasting, spearmint, uh, very good tasting spray, uh, flavor, uh, is spearmint, sprayed under the tongue, and there's no problems. The absorption is right there, and, and it's, just, it's just not a challenge. Now, if you're going to choose to use an oral form, as I've said for, since the beginning, and I want to reemphasize now, it is very important that you get your blood level tested. And I'll tell you one of the main reasons why that we've just recently started to appreciate. And that is there is a 600% difference in absorption between one individual in, in, in a population between potentially different individuals. So that means that if individual A took a certain dose and individual B took another, the same dose, that individual A could have a six times higher value of vitamin D in their blood or, or, or level of vitamin D in their blood than the, than the other person. So uh, we know that about 50% of this is related to a person's weight. So if you're obese or very heavy, then you're gonna need a higher dose of vitamin D. The other 50% is related to unknown genetic variability. And we're, we're, the scientists and researchers are working on this right now, but right, it, it is clearly 300% just related to genetics. So from that reason alone, you're gonna wanna get your blood level tested because you're don't, you just don't know what the dose is. We have some standard recommended starting guidelines, but I would recommend, because for, for, this is the strategy I would recommend, because virtually everyone is deficient, to go on it for four weeks. The risk of overdose is very, very low. The risk of overdose from UVB exposure to the, to the sun, as I mentioned, is just is not existent because your skin is a feedback mechanism which shuts off vitamin D production, but when you're taking it orally, that is a concern. So, but it, you have to take it for a long time for that to happen, so it's pretty low risk if you're gonna take it for four weeks. Then get your blood level tested, and then you'll know if you, how, exactly how much you need to take. Uh, and then you'll know also if you're in the therapeutic range because there, there's, a, there's a huge difference between a, someone who's subtherapeutic versus therapeutic. And then of course, it's also gonna serve as a precaution to make sure that you don't overdose because it is an oil soluble vitamin, vitamin D, and there is that small risk. Now, the, the other caution that I would recommend, and I've said this before and I have a video on this, is that you have to pay attention to the details when you're getting your blood levels measured because there is a major controversy going on right now in the United States and that there's two primary lab uh, that, that test for vitamin D, it's called Quest, one of them is Quest, the other is LabCorp, and you can watch my video for more details, but, but the summary is that you want to use LabCorp, do not use Quest, there are some real challenges with their methodology at this point. So this is, this is really, uh, I'm hoping you, you've enjoyed the video, this video because it's, gonna, it's provided you with some of the simple, practical, technical information you, you can use to implement everything we've been saying about vitamin D because if your vitamin D levels aren't optimized in your blood, you're not gonna be able to receive those benefits. So and as I said earlier, it's really clearly one of the single most important physical uh, factors that uh, for yourself and your family to take control of your health.